<laughs> Hello, change makers. Dan here. I'm so excited. I've got Kate Wilson, a special guest. So we're doing a special um, well, recorded interview that we're going to share within the group. And Kate's one of our members that we had did a spotlight on last week. And I was just so inspired by her messages and what she said mm -hmm. and, and by the person she is. And if you look at, um, you can look at just the work behind her, just the light and the color and the love that's coming off of who she is and what she does. I really felt like she was someone, um, a good example of, of the kind of people we have in this community. You know, I've gotten a chance to talk with a lot of you individually, and we've got people in here that are artists, people that have written books. So many of you um, have done so many things and have so much more to do in life. And this group is really about all about creating the change you want in your life so that you can be the change you want to see in the world. And so we're just going to have a little conversation here with Kate so we can all get to know her a little bit. Kate, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. I am fantastic. I love that I can have a screen where you and I are next to each other. And yet I'm in Rhode Island and you're in California. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the power, the power. I, you know, I think COVID did a lot of things, but one thing it did was teach us how to use technology to bridge and community, make this community. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a big theme for me over the last few years has been connection because earlier in my life, I was very focused, very much went through life with blinders on. And in the last few years, I'm kind of like, hey, you know, other people are what make life amazing. You know, like a lot of times <laughs> people, people can be the good and the bad, but having positive connection and, and what, again, like being able to connect like this across the country, across the world. And it's just so amazing. So, yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. So I love some of the things you said, and um, I'd love to talk a little bit about what you do. So you're um, tell us a little bit about you. Like you're an artist. How do you get into that? Uh, well, I believe I was born into it, honestly, from the little kid finding the dirt spot at the end of the driveway on a stick or, you know, rearranging the leaves instead of raking them, finding just ways of, of expressing, sort of expressing myself. So my mom and my dad, it's an interesting combination that I feel like I am. My father took me camping, hiking, canoeing, backpacking, all of these things. And my mom took me to the museums and sort of hit the cultural part of things. And so as a child being alone in the woods, well, alone, right? But like off just with nothing else, pre-screen devices and all of that, it was just this sensory concert you know you had the sounds you had the smells you knew the birds you you just it it was just a beautiful beautiful safe world it felt like and then the other side going to the museums was all about um these masters who most of them we were at the museum of fine arts in boston who had passed right so it's so it's looking at something hanging on the wall that they may have painted my favorite rooms were the Monet, um, were the Impressionists. So to walk up to a Monet, which clearly he had painted a while ago, but if you get up close and you can see these brush strokes, it just, it felt like it transported me in the same way that the nature did where I was almost witness to the last marks, right? It was like, he made a choice, moved that bunch of paint in the way that he did and looking very closely it doesn't really look like anything to me but he knew what he was doing and then the you step back and you understand that that tiny little flick of the yellow inside that blue and green and purple way down there what's the point and then you realize it's the sun reflecting on the water or something it's part of this larger thing and so i just i felt like my upbringing was natural, but then it was also just being curious, I guess, would be a way and very visual, everything observational. So wow, I love that. Yeah. And I love the the connection to nature. You know, and I think one of the one of the causes of stress in our world today is a disconnection from nature. You sure. know, we're living in artificial environments with artificial sounds, artificial air, <laughs> you know, and just being able to immerse yourself in a forest, in nature, in the ocean, in it, it's it, it, re it relaxes us on such a deep level. Um, and so having that, that connection there. And then what I love what you said about studying the paintings and the brushstrokes and, and making that connection between nature and, and how it, how nature sort of painted its strokes. 
And then, and the artist, he, you know, he moved the brush and moved the paint a little bit to create an effect. And I, and the other thing I love about what you said is just about how you were born into it. Cause I think, you know, I never grew up artistic and I never felt creative. Mm. And I think probably it was because I was always trying to be someone else. Mm. I was trying to be the person I thought I was supposed to be. Yeah. And so I didn't know how to be creative because I was blocking my own self-expression. Sure. And, and to me, art is just exactly what you said. It's about self-expression. Mm. And, and, and that's what I think is just, is just so key is, is so key to all that. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Cool. So painting is that, that's primarily the art you, you do or. It is my focus right now, I think is the okay. way I need to say it. I can give okay. you a quick spin with my computer sure. and show you everything that I do, but. Yeah, give us a tour. <laughs> I, I, will. I, I Like everyone needs to buckle up because one, <laughs> you might get dizzy depending on how that is, like step back. But I also, um, I, I create in a lot of different ways. I just, that is, I'm trying right now. My challenge to myself is to create uh, sort of a collection. So right now my focus, I'm working on, shh, nobody else knows this yet. This is the first public announcement, um, endangered species. Oh, wow. And so I've, I'm my elephant. I just, it's almost finished. And I, th- that's oil, which I finger paint and it is so thick and wet that I, I can't touch it yet. And my zebra, mm-hmm. And then I have a few others that are in process, but that's sort of like, okay, Kate, you are now committing to this, to this thing. Then you also have back here, some abstracts. I can show a little bit. And my abstracts tend to be super layered. They are maybe 30 layers of paint where I am. I've done some videos. If anyone is, has seen me on mostly on Instagram, I'm trying to figure Facebook out and how to get them over there. Um, But they are, I'm just physical and I am moving the paint and throwing the paint and just so I don't know what I'm connected to, but whatever it is, it just feels phenomenal. It's just so much fun. And I just release the idea of I'm trying to do anything in particular. And so often I have like three canvases going at once big, um, like this one right here is married to that one, which I don't know where, oh, the other one is actually behind behind my elephant. So I had all three, those are 30 by 40 inches. Like I'll show you, the, they're, they're larger than you may think when I'm okay. so close to you. Like this guy is 40 by 48 by 60. Um, but when I'm working with a series to have all three canvases side by side, then I can rotate them and flip them around and maneuver them side by side. Because to me, there's this real psychology that I get into where it's about, I don't want to be precise. I don't want to, you know, judge myself. Like it is, it is, it's like, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's like a church in the, I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's almost this like, it's a spiritual connection to me when I'm working on the abstracts because it is about channeling whatever this is inside of me where I have to step aside. And that is what I'm trying to do. I want to not be looking at it and saying, you know, that blue should really be this blue or "Mm, that stroke wasn't quite right, you know, whatever it is. And so they are layered upon layered upon layered and what ends up starting to happen for me as I'm rotating them around, I'm assessing slightly, mostly what all I want is sort of for you to feel like you're traveling through. I'm not looking particularly for this part is next to here and it's blue with that green. It's more, I I want it to feel like an experience. Like you are, you have to, you're kind of present with it. Connecting to being present in nature or present at the museum when I was looking at art as a child where that's that that's an uh a, and again I say spiritual because I don't know a better word for it but a place where any human can stand and look and think or stop thinking and just I don't know what is it that happens when we're quiet when we're being sort of just very present it's like you lose your identity, you lose your worries, you lose your stresses, you lose 
you, you just sort of let it all fall away. And so that's, that's what happens when I'm trying to make those abstracts is that each one is this challenge to me to say, this is not about you, Kate. This is not about you. Like just, just, just have all the fun. Um, so that's long winded. Those are the two, two main painting things. Um, I'll spin my handy dandy table. Sometimes I sit on my yoga ball. That was a found object. Um, this is where I paint my abstract, my, um, sorry, acrylics. And on, these are my lovely um, easels. I've got about 30 small canvases that I am working on them simultaneously. As I said, just three canvases. This is maybe less than 20, but I am just moving in and around and through and they're, they're building up in layers. Right now they're kind of like adolescents. Like you, you're you happy they're safe, but you don't really want them around right now. Like I don't want to show you those yet. Fair <laughs> um, and then my my this, my this studio is, is a little extensive. Um, in this corner behind that wall, you can kind of see, I do some photographic work that is macro photography that I blow up very large. Like that, those are bees on um, some, uh, they're on sedum. I don't know if you have that where you are, but the bees are like eight inches in the, the photograph. And some of those photographic pieces are, um, there's some installations up here that are like 12 feet by 18 feet. And it literally started out as a little piece of light I bought at Target. Um, and But now it's this extensive, beautiful, because you're, I'm trying to have people appreciate like the, the nothingness, right? A little, a little filament of light that I bought at Target. How long do you like that? Well, maybe for the season and then you throw it out. But to make this grand piece that you know, is spanning two floors is that something. So, um, and then spinning around, I'll stand up. <laughs> uh, spinning around, some of my um, paintings are over there and I'm not sure if you can sort of see, oh, I'll try to point. Um, over here, I have, I guess I could grab them off the wall. They're not set up exactly right now, but I worked with ink. This is ink with metallics in it that I um, worked on, I painted on a piece of uh, like plastic basically. And there's a clear piece on top. And I started first with paper and I loved that I could do this. And then I started with just working on one piece of sort of the luminous um, acrylic panel, I guess is a good way to say it. And the light kind of came through because I set up standoffs. So it sits off the wall a little. Oh, that's very cool, yeah. And then what I did is I was like, but now I wanna do something else. And so those lights I told you about, I actually embedded in the back. And so there's remote controls set up. So you can, with your clicker, and I didn't plan this just at all to share with you, so they're not plugged in right now. But there are lights in different spots, and you can set them to different things. Um, but then another piece of me is that I also hide trash in my work. So inside here, there's actually plastic bags um, to wow. give a little bit of the color. This one has just sort of, you can look to see. Uh, this one has some of the lighter part of the panel here. And what that does is when they're lit, it ends up casting sort of a shadow because they, the light won't penetrate through. Um, okay. One of the other ones it has a pink wash because it was a pink um, plastic bag. Um, so then, see, this is what happens in my head. <laughs> <laughs> As I break this way. So then I guess... Well, I can spin you all the way around first to keep the tour going. Um, <laughs> finger painting, so much fun. I, my ode to Monet, because of course he's one of my favorites. Um, during beginning of COVID, I got into painting mountains and I'm in Rhode Island, I'm on the water, um, but I spent two years during college out in the Rockies. And that was a really special time in my life. I felt like I left a little bit of my soul there. And while we were in the beginning of lockdown, I shut my studio and came home and brought a few canvases and little brushes. 
And I just needed to paint large. I just needed the space. And so what it, it said to me was paint things that are large, things that are expansive, things that are also stationary while we are in a global turmoil. We don't know what this is really going to be. But for me, that plug back to nature of this is here. It was here before us. It will be here after. Um, and then color makes me happy. So here we go. There's a mountain there that couldn't be brighter, I don't think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's Mount Sunapee. With the, they have a, it's a sweet story. It's up in New Hampshire where they have um, a boat, like a ferry boat that goes around to all the different places because it used to be that only a train would take people up and they would get dropped off and the ferry boat would take them to their cabins. But then the wilds of the mountains were just, nobody was there. And so it's a real, it's a cool throwback to me to think of how humans have, you know, have selected to, you know, come into a space. So then I've got more, most of those are finger paints. I, I worked on them pretty small. And then, yeah, my beautiful big windows. Those are more the flowers way in the back. Those are also huge panels. There's three of those that are there. Okay, then, well, I don't know if my cord will work. Coming back around. Okay, so that's, that's it. That's my studio, ground floor. But wait, <laughs> I, I also make things out of- oh, wow random thing. So I may unplug you. We'll see if we need to plug back in. But this guy, it's probably best if I walk you that way. Yeah. So that's eight feet by eight feet by eight feet. And it is made out of coffee filters and magnets. And I'll get right underneath it where you can see others. That black one is um, recycled windshield wiper blades. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and this one is elastic from clothing. But over to here, that centerpiece is actually over 500 wishes for the planet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was weird. I have to say, I'll sit down and tell you that story. <laughs> um, yeah, I had, I had a dream. I mean, we all heard the story of building in the mashed potatoes and just having something speak to us and uh, speak to the guy in that movie. And I woke up after one night and was like, my, to my husband, I was like, I don't even know what that was about and went on to sleep the next night, woke up having had the very same dream. Then the next night, three nights in a row, I dreamt of this white, ethereal, protected protective thing. And I was like, I don't I have, I, I, I don't, I'm not that kind of a person. Like, I don't, you know, I'm pretty grounded. Okay. I'm busy, but like, I'm pretty focused and grounded. And so I thought I should just start drawing this out and kind of figure out what this is to me. And so I put all the two-dimensional art aside and was like, I think I have to build it. And so I ended up, I ended up figuring out and I'm not a sculptor. Like I've worked with clay, but not, you know, sculpting large things. Um, I ended up finding metal that was ferrous. And I honestly went to the hardware store. And if you buy really inexpensive um, pieces to, I guess, line your closet with, like if you're making shelves or something, they're ferrous. So it means they're magnetic. And so the large coffee filters, I was like, that's what I need to use. And so they're attached with the coffee filters because my thought was it, I need to make it here, but I need to be able to take it away, right? Put it somewhere, put it on display and be able to lock it back down. And so it all can come, come apart. But as I was making it, it was pre pandemic. It was pre um, it was 2019. And so 2020 was actually the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And so I, I felt that somehow that's what this connective, uh, safe, warm, like wings almost feeling, sort of angelic, but more like, I don't know, when you think of a swan and you see them open up, and even though you know they're angry and they will come and peck you, you see this like 
magnificent beauty in those feathers. And so I, I just started asking people if I could have any wish for the planet that they would give me. And so I ended up making these little pieces of paper and people coming through my studio or honestly anyone, the guests, the lean attendant at the, you know, wherever I would collect wishes and, and started to figure out how I wanted to incorporate them because it felt to me like this wasn't just the fact that I had this dream, it wasn't mine. It was, it was sort of this community thing. I needed to make this as sort of this resonance for hope and for positivity and for anybody from any walk of life to say, I wish this for the planet. Some of the wishes are, you know, I, I've looked through all of them. Nobody else can see them because they're all tied up. And I asked for just a first name and the age you feel because I just thought psychologically that's a really important thing to talk with someone about. Um, but this is embodying hope for the planet. And somehow, somewhere, some way, um, uh, my dream partly was that this could be where it can be, you know, in public, where people can continue to give their wishes and share and, and be a part of something larger. Right. And this was all, like I said, pre COVID, it was slated to be hung in the state house, the rotunda of Rhode Island. Um, the state house is this beautiful, I'm sure yours is just as gorgeous, this beautiful hand painted rotunda. Um, but because it was paper, the fire marshal said, no, it cannot hang there. So I at least can live on the dream that like it was meant to be somewhere and people would have come by and, you know, been able to put their wishes. So her name is Hope for the Planet. She's on my website. You can see her better because I wasn't probably doing the best job. But anyway, so that that is that feeling I feel like is what I I try to put into every painting I do is that I want to share hope. I want to share love. I want to share joy. I paint with colors that make me happy because I feel like our spaces, our home spaces, our workspaces are almost like our, our caves and our dens, our protected havens. And they should be a place where you feel enlivened and you feel energetic and you feel joyous. And that, like you were talking about to me, is, the, is a ripple effect where that feeling, you, you know, you love this painting of this elephant because elephants are your thing. And there's a hidden secret word in there. And you know that, and you look at that and you're like, love. Yeah. And then you put on your shoes, you put on your coat, you head out your door and you're bringing already a, an energy level out into the world that is less heavy, I guess is a good way to say it. Less draggy, less afraid, less um, I don't know, way down, I guess is the way to say it. So did I answer your question? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, no, that, was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you so much. And there were so many yeah. things that you shared that I, that I wanted to highlight a, a little bit, okay. but one is that, first of all, just, it, you know, like that elephant behind you and the zebra, like I, it's funny. I, I don't think I recognized there was an elephant right away because it, it, it wasn't obvious. And then as soon, all of a sudden it, it hit me and it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. I absolutely Thank love you. that painting and I love elephants and I love the colors you use. And I love, I don't know what your intention was with it, but it almost look like they're islands and there's water sort of creeping up in them. But it just, I love the way it, it, I just, it's, it's beautiful. And I love too. And the zebra too. I feel like they're both looking at us. Thank you're you. Kind of like, I hope you guys know what you're doing. I hope you're, <laughs> I hope you're taking this seriously. <laughs> right. That's part of my secret evil plan is that I'm like, love for everybody and all the planets and the animals. And yeah, yeah. That, that they're here and they're, they're so quiet, especially with COVID and, right. uh, and everything else going on in the world. We talk about climate change, but the idea that this is a photograph of a particular animal that doesn't have a voice, you know? Yeah. You know, that's a big, a big thing. And it goes back again to love. I I love that elephant. I know that elephant. I've spent the time figuring out my colors and painting it. And I feel like it's come alive, sort of. So yeah, yeah. I don't know what will happen with the series with these animals, but the more I'm working on it, the more I feel like again, sort of with this hope for the planet, that this is this message of humans that 
you know, find, find what empowers you find your passion. It can be elephants. It could be zebras. It could be, it doesn't matter what it is. It's the fact that you feel impassioned by something that you feel motivated and um, that you want to support, that you want to connect, you know, that's, that's really important, powerful. Yeah. And I love that, um, that you, you, you touched on this and it's kind of obvious too, that you're really just being creative and not self-editing. And that's, you know, and art is about self-expression, right? And there's so many ways that we express ourselves through the way we dress, the way we speak, the way we write. And, you know, and art is a way that, you know, sometimes you can express things in a way that you weren't even sure you needed to or wanted to express, but you just allowed it to to flow through you, right? And And I like that aspect of it. And I think that's, that's such a critical thing. And that's where people get stuck is when they self edit and they start thinking too much instead of just letting it flow. And it's obvious that you've connected to something. Um, and um, it's, it's really cool to see what you, what you have to share. And I love that you mentioned too, that you um, you love to dance when you paint. Cause one of the expressions that I like to, to, to tell people that are when I'm coaching them or things like that is follow the joy. Mm. Cause, we, Cause you can't help, but you can't help but spread the emotions that you're feeling inside. So if you're feeling fear and anger and resentment, you're spreading it, whether you want to or not. And when you're feeling joy, that's like your best guide to knowing that childlike impulse you have. Because that's the thing, we're all, like you said, whatever age you feel, we're all basically children and we have a positive and a negative side. We have a childish side and a childlike side, Mm -hmm. you know? And the more we can connect with that childlike side, and be and have like the maturity of an adult, but the childlike curiosity and wonder and creativity and just love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the more we can just ex- show up as our true selves and and connect with each other in, in more meaningful ways. I totally hear you. I totally do. And the dancing part is an interesting piece for me because I um I suffered a concussion that kept me on the couch for a year. I was training for my first marathon. I can never Mm. run again. So I went through a large part and I had two small children, one kindergarten, one second grade at, you know, as part of this whole package. And, you know, I had, my path was that I, you know, spent my time in nature. I was a babysitter, camp counselor, ended up going to a college with a great art program, but dove into being an elementary school teacher, which I loved. Um, But at the time it was like, how can I earn money? Oh, look, I can become certified as a teacher. And I brought art into my classroom with my kids. Then I ended up um, having my children and retiring and loving that life with them until One fateful night, I was not skydiving. It was nothing risky, nothing (laughs) selfish. I was literally loading groceries into the trunk of the car. And one of those gusty nights where it was super rainy, I had my rain hood on, my sweatshirt hood on, last bag to put in. And the wind just came down the parking lot and shut that trunk on me, clipped my head. I severed a ligament, like sent me down. My brain restart, like... it was a reboot. It was literally like your computer where you're like, you can do it. Come on. So what that did to me while I was trying this year of healing was to say, I have to think that life knocked me off. It had to be, there's a reason I had to feel like there was a reason because literally my life shut down And it really, what came apparent was I need to do this art. It's now time for me to figure this out and do this. And I'm not in charge of when life says that's your last breath. And I wasn't in charge of this situation, but I can be in charge of every choice I make from now until that last moment. Those are mine. And that is a huge gift. It is a huge responsibility, but I see it as, that's where this mission comes from. That's why I, I, I paint with such fervor because I am so filled with gratitude. I'm so filled with joy. The fact that I can move around and I can dance and I can throw colors on large canvases, you know? So that's, that's another piece of this for me is like, it's a, this is a gift. I have this gift that, that somehow the world or whoever was in charge said, Kate, it's your turn now. Go this way. 
Well, that's that's an amazing story, and thank you for sharing that. And um, yeah. I'm so glad that you that you're able to frame it in that context and and create something so beautiful and so powerful out of that experience. It was, I'm sure, very difficult. You know, it, it, you kind of brush over a year. You know, that's like a you don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's just like the nature. You know, like we talk about how, you know, we we create this sense of stability, and there's often these times of stability, but we never know when a storm's coming. We never know when the meteorite's going to hit. You know, <laughs> like we never know what's going to happen. Right. And to be able to take something negative, where you you know almost knocked you know knocked you out um, for a year, and to be able to come back from that and create something so beautiful and positive is amazing. Thank you. And for everyone out there listening, I learned some really interesting things from a doctor who works with stroke patients. And I clung on to that nugget. And that is that our brain, as we all know, our brain is big and we don't really make use of all of it. Different people say different amounts are what we use every day. But for these patients, stroke patients that have had some an injury and part of their brain is deadened, their brains weave new synapses. And so it's really important for them as they are relearning how to speak, how to walk, how to eat, how to read, how to whatever it is that you know they're struggling with, their brain is so malleable that it's able to say, I'm going to go around this dead part and, and still do these things that I'm being asked to do. And that was part of what I felt like I needed, that I needed to say, okay, I, I challenge my brain to do this. I, I, I'm, I need to grow my brain. I need to learn. And so I took myself, well, I took myself to RISD. I did. I took myself to RISD because I was like, you know, I need to, I need to have training. I need to have guidance. I need to have teaching. I need to learn concepts that are sort of what is supposed to be done. Um, and I went through graphic design and loved every bit of it, but clearly I'm not doing graphic design anymore. Well, I am in just my own, you know, abstracty way, but that was a really big part for me. And I think is a lesson to everyone that no matter what life hands you, it is, it is up to you to see that as, as a, as a challenge, not in the, I can't do it, but in how can I? How can I move forward and how can I move past it? What kind of help do I need? What kind of support do I need? How can I give some of that to myself too? So, yeah. That's so, that's so cool. <laughs> so um, so I, I know you do a lot of work that's just inspired that you want to do, um, but you also do some commissions as well. Or what's the, what, how do you, how do people work with you and what do you, what do you do normally? <laughs> yeah, those are so fun. Yeah, mo this is all me. My this is my playtime. Um, but okay. what's interesting with a commission? Um, mostly they've been painting commissions, not really photography. So, um, someone will ask me to do a painting for them, and usually they have an idea in mind. Most of them so far have been mountains based, I think, on the mountains that I have done, you know, they see that this is something and they are connecting to uh, a memory. Most of them are about this mountain represents this to me for this reason, or they have a lot of them have been gifts that this mountain, I can't be their sweet. The first one was a brother who lives here in Rhode Island, but he skis with his brother in Colorado and couldn't get there during COVID. So he said, I want to paint I want, mm -hmm. I want to give him a painting of our mountain. And so just this, this idea of, of something that's important, they're skiing, that's a passion that they share. Um, and so it's really a fun process where we talk. I do Zoom calls if unless somebody's local and wants to come in and to talk with me. But we, we talk about what it is that they are interested in having be a part of their painting. Um, if it's photo, from a photograph, I always get permission from whoever, um, the, whoever took the photograph. That's a really important thing. Um, there's a beautiful picture painting I did. Uh, I just posted uh, from Switzerland where I had found this beautiful picture online of Leck, Leek, Leck. I think it's Leck. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's beautiful, beautiful mountain village nestled in these trees. And it turns out it was taken by one of the ski, ski patrollers. So I had to, who doesn't speak very much English. So I had to find out that it was from the ski patroller. This person had to connect 
to who to email. He, of course, was like, of course, make a painting, you know, and so it's just it's it's a way of of having of, of again, community and connecting. And so I have permission, we can use this picture. Let's talk about the colors and the feel that you want to have it. Do you want it more abstract or very specific? Um, and then it's playing with colors and how colors feel to you. Do you have favorite colors? Do you have colors you don't like? And so it's, it's me then laying out, usually I make three or four sketches um, and we're playing with different palettes. And most of the people that I've done commissions for have never had a commission painting done before. Mm -hmm. And yet they feel like it's a real adventure. It's like an experience in itself because we're talking about it. We're figuring out, we're thinking about it, why those colors feel good next to those, or they don't, or this could be darker or lighter and all of that. And so finally they commit to the color palette and what they're thinking about. I always hide a secret message in the commissions. There's all sorts of things that are that are written in. Whether there was one family that um, there was a child already born and one on the way, and so I I snuggled specific initials in and just to be for the baby because it wasn't born yet. Um, some things I make glow in the dark so that they appear. Um, but then as I'm working on, I first. I'm drawing it on the canvas, the size that they've selected and sharing it all. I've shared them. I post videos of what I do, but I also am sharing private videos as we are communicating through on the process every single step of the way. And then it's, it's then they have this collection of the process that this didn't exist, that they wanted something and they were a part of the making of it. And then I made it send it off to them, and then they have it. And then they have this backlog where they can say to their friends, hey, look, this is how, how it came to be. And so commissions to me are just, they're so much fun, so much fun. So. Wow. And I can see why. And, and I love how you explained it that way, because it's like you, and a lot of your, your, your clients who get commissions with you have never done it before, like you said, and it's, it's something I hadn't thought about doing, but when you express, when you explain it that way, it like makes it the art so much more meaningful and personal. And then, and they're part, like you said, it's an adventure because they're part of the experience of creating it um, because they're telling you their stories and what, what it means to them. And then you get to take that and, and let that inspire you to create something. So that, that's really, thank you so much for sharing that. So how, how should people connect with you? Like if they want to see your work, where's the best place to find your work or if they wanted a commission? Sure. Definitely. So um, I, in part of this group, I'm sure if you click on me in Facebook, you can go to my profile and my website is linked there. My website is katewilsonfineart.com. So you can definitely check it out, check that out. But I, you know, this whole world in COVID where we're all safe and we're all locked inside, I love this personal part of it. And so I would love to sit down on a Zoom call or a voice call and communicate with people about what they're thinking about. They want to learn more about the process. On my website, I do have a really extensive page that breaks everything down step by step, as well as I've I've asked, it's hysterical, I have a few interviews, um, because I've asked clients, I feel like they're the best commercial for me, I, who knows who I am, but you know, they, they, they're talking about the process of working with me, I think is the best commercial that there is, because you know, we're just, we're laughing. The dog is climbing up. Like we're just, I'm just a person. You're just people. And yet together we can create something that's really meaningful. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's what it's, it's about the connection. And I think that's what's so powerful, creating that connection. And together you make something that's, that's even greater than either one of you would have done on your own. But when you create that connection, it, it makes the synergy that comes out of it is so amazing. Yeah. So um, you you did um, you were our, our member spotlight last week and or the week before I don't remember and I asked you a couple of questions and I really love some of your answers and I just wanted to give you kind of a, a kind of a final note to share some of that a little bit about sure. you know what is it I think you know I asked kind of why did you join the group what change do you want to create in the world and and what change do you want to create in your own life and if you wanted to share a quick message on on that that'd be great. Sure. Well, um, I. Don't know if it's clear, but I would like to share love with the entire planet. 
I do. Love is a word that I hide in all of my art pieces. Sometimes it's tiny. You can see behind me that when I went to town and it's literally the entire thing. There's a video of that. I think it's at least on my Instagram, which is Kate Wilson dot artist. And I, I did a time lapse of me literally crawling all over the floor painting that one because I, I just had to. I just had to get the love out. Um, but I that's that's the message for me is is that we let's let's just share. Let's just share this this feeling because I don't know what's going to happen once I pass on from this life. I may come back again. I don't know. No one is yet to tell me how this really continues, right? And so you know, your home, your space to, like I said, to have it be a place where you feel like, yeah, this it feels good. It feels, it me, there's meaning to me in my life and I want to celebrate that. So. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's so, that's so basic and so fundamental and it's so, but also so overlooked so, so often, you know, and so often when we have miscommunication, when we have struggle, when we have disagreements, there's a lack of love, right? Like, I mean, yeah. like it's so fundamental. It's almost like, you know, if, if a plant's not growing, you think, well, is the soil good? Does it need more water? Does it need more light? But if a person's not growing, sometimes we just want to judge them. <laughs> yeah. and not, yeah. If we just give them the love they need, you know, give them what they need to grow. Don't try to tell them how to grow. Um, and, you know, love is a, the most basic fundamental thing that people need. And just giving giving it more freely, I think it just, it, it makes our life experience better for, for everyone. Yeah, the way I like to view it, I have two kids, like I, I mentioned, now one is going to be 20 next weekend and the other one is 17. I've had some time to have some conversations with them, but we really break it down to, is it love or is it fear? Mm. Pretty much everything can fall into these categories. And so when you are judging someone or when you're judging yourself, when you're feeling late to something like all of those, that it, that's, a, that's fear. And, and the being curious is, is love. It's saying, why is that? Or if that person is making you angry and you're judging them about whatever, why are you judging them? Like, what is it? What is this larger? Can we step back a tiny little bit and just kind of be curious? Because oftentimes we're all just, like I said, trying to get by. We're all trying to make it through right? Especially during COVID. We are continuing to feel like this should have been over a long time ago. And so <laughs> yeah. more than ever, we all need to just give each other and ourselves a break and say, yeah, what, what could be something that is making that person, you know, act that way? So love that, her. That, that's, I mean, that's brilliant, honestly. And, and I think, cause I, I, I believe that, you know, we're all natural, we have this natural tendency to love, but it's blocked by our fear. Mm. Right. And yep. and what's the solution? You just said it curiosity, you know, instead of saying that that person's a bad person, well, what's going on in their life? What are they scared of? What are they worried about? What are they concerned over? What are they stressed over? Yeah. And um, getting curious. Yeah. Cause so many times when someone says something to me and it upsets me, when I actually talk to them about it, I realize that we kind of agree. It's just, we have different ways of expressing it, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, but that's such a, I love that the love and the fear and then having that the curiosity to, to bridge that gap and understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because oftentimes when people are angry or rude or mean, they are locked in their own little fear cycle. Pain is another fear, right? Yeah. It's, and, and what they actually really need is love. They need yeah. They need that water, that sunlight, that soil that you're offering to the plant. But as humans, there's ego involved, right? I mean, there are a lot more layers. It's not that easy and clean, but you know, that's, yeah, that's, that is my message. That message, that is my message is to find things that feel good to you, that are important to you as human, as you right now in your existence and, and, and draw from that period. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, thank you so much for doing this interview and sharing yeah. your work and your message and all your stories. It's been such a pleasure. So, You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. I appreciate the questions that you were asking me and I, I hope that I wasn't too confusing or you know, making people dizzy because I, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll get some feedback from the group, but I think you did a awesome. great job and uh, so excited. So 
Thank Have you. Have a good day and thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan. Bye. Bye.